Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're going to be doing a painting based off of Stardew Valley. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. I've wanted to do a Stardew Valley painting for a while now, um, and I really love the game, and it's been kind of on my mind lately, so I thought it would be a fun one to attempt right now. Now, I had thought about different things in the game I could paint, and I thought about the title screen in particular, but it kind of felt empty with so much sky being in the space. So I kind of thought about bringing different elements of the game to kind of the area below the title screen. And then it started to feel more like a Bob Ross composition, so I thought it would be really fun to attempt a Bob Ross composition with his brush techniques, um, but with Stardew Valley elements. So kind of from my little horizon here and up, it's kind of more like the title screen. And then from there below, I've just kind of grabbed a couple elements from the game to kind of just complete the composition of the title screen. I have a body of water here because it didn't feel right without one being a Bob Ross style. And then I have the original plain player's house here on the left. Um, and I just kind of put a small path leading up to it. So I want to build all of these different elements just like Bob Ross does. So we're going to be starting with the sky. So I'm starting with my two inch brush and I've just mixed some ultramarine blue with some titanium white and I'm going to put this along the top of my canvas. Um, and it's going to be darker here across the top and then as I work my way down the canvas I'm going to switch over to the same color but with a little bit of yellow just to make it a little bit more teal. While my background is still wet, I'm just going to grab a little bit of titanium white on a clean brush and just start to scrub in some clouds. So I was working on these clouds and I think I made them too big. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of flatten the paint I have here on the canvas so I don't have any ridges where um, the brush marks had made marks. That way it'll dry nice and flat and then I can just go back over it and start again with my gradient. One of my favorite things about acrylic paint is you can let it dry and then paint back over it. It's really easy to do and I never give up, I can always just try again. So now that this is dry I'm just going to redo that gradient on top, let it dry and then try the clouds again. To help limit myself of how big the clouds should be, I'm just going to kind of go based on my drawing and lightly draw an outline of where I should try and keep the clouds. This is a gray purple for the shadow of these clouds and I'm using a bristle brush to apply it because it gives me a softer edge when I kind of tap it here on the canvas. And then I'm just working more and more white towards the highlight parts of these clouds where I want it to be pure titanium white. I didn't want to work with too big of an area by doing both sides at once, so I just did the right side and now I'm going to do the same on the left side. The clouds turned out really good this time, so I'm going to use my chalk pastel to draw in all the mountain ranges. I need them all there on the canvas so I can get a sense of scale to see um, if some of them should be bigger or smaller. I don't just want to start with some of these faraway ones and then end up in the wrong spot or something. So I'm going to draw them all in and then I'll start by painting the faraway ones. All of these mountains are going to be shades of green. They're a bit more yellow green towards the bottom and the furthest ones are going to be a bit more blue green. So I've mixed up a blue green and um, put some dark gray into it and this is going to be my base layer for all of these far away mountains. And I'm going to just fill them in solid first and then I'll start adding some highlights and shadows to give them some definition here on the canvas. With this color on the canvas, I think it's too dark, too saturated, and too green. So I've mixed up a new color that's more gray, more blue, and less saturated. I 
I used the chalk to draw in the edge of the mountain so I could kind of see where the um, highlights are going on the left and the shadows on the right. For the highlights, I'm using a lighter blue, and then on the shadow side, I'm going to use this color as my shadow, but I'm just going to make it just a little bit lighter to do a little bit of a highlight on the shadow side. I'm using to make some distance between these four mountain ranges is called atmospheric perspective. I'm taking the ones that are further back and making them less saturated. So I kind of have a blue gray and a green gray and then these two are going to be um, the same kind of green colors but with less gray. They're going to have more saturation, more bright colors. Um, so that's going to kind of change that distance so these ones look closer and these ones look further. Now that's just one trick I could use. Um, I could also kind of bring some mist up from the bottom to kind of make it look like there's some space in between the green one and the blue one, but I'm just kind of using that saturation trick and I'm also going from the blue into kind of the yellow green. Just like the blue layer, I'm taking my chalk pastel and kind of giving myself the edge of the mountains here so I know which side the highlight is and then which side is going to get the shadow. So this third layer is greener and I've also made it darker. So there's less gray in it, but then I added a little bit of black just to make it dark for the shadow. These last two here, I think I want the contrast to be less. So um, on the value scale from the lightest white all the way to the darkest black, these two layers kind of fall more towards the middle. They're not all the way towards the light end and they're not all the way towards the dark end. But these front two mountain ranges, I'm gonna kind of stretch that, where the lightest lights are gonna get closer to white and the darkest darks are gonna get closer to black. To say a couple things about the shapes of the mountains to help you vary it up, I'm not doing them all just like this across my canvas. They're all the same height here, um, they're all the same perfect little triangle. I don't want my mountains to look like that. They won't look like real mountain ranges then. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of like making some of them jut out a little bit as I'm working. Some of them could be a little bit more round across the top, and some of them, I, they're just kind of all over the place just to make them look more natural. Also, you can vary up the heights, Maybe this one comes up a bit taller and then comes down instead of being so tall here, maybe this one's a little bit shorter. So you can vary them up that way just to make them look different. The other thing I'm thinking about is I'm having these two faraway mountain ranges be a little bit pointier and these two down here I'm making them a little bit more round like they're foothills. So instead of just kind of coming up to a point for each of these hills, I'm just kind of coming up and then rounding the tops of each of these just to vary it up and make them look a little bit smaller than my number two and my number one range. Now that these mountains are done, you can really see the difference between the desaturated faraway ones and the saturated close-up ones, so it really gives that sense of distance. But I have all this green on my palette, so I'm just going to use it to kind of block in the ground, and I'm going to use some blue and white for the water.
Now, I'm not sure what happened to the clip before the last one and this one. Um, something happened with the camera, but what I did is I had a bristle brush and I was working on these faraway hills here, using some of my highlights from these mountain ranges, um, the darker green in it, and then working into the lighter green. I just started to tap in with the bristle brush some of the medium colors here, and then once I kind of had a nice shape for that, I worked on the lighter colors just to bring in some highlights right kind of on the top of these hills in here. Once I did that, I had every intention of working on the water, but I was having fun with it because it's kind of fun just to take a big bristle brush and tap it on the canvas, so I kept working on my ground plane. I used a bigger bristle brush for these front ones because you want to use a big brush when you're painting big areas and a little brush for little areas. So I just kind of kept tapping with all of these same colors to fill in these hills here, just kind of bringing it up as I wanted and then deciding if I wanted to go this way with it or up with it, just changing it up and having some fun. So I just kind of tapped in all of my hills that way. For the water, I had used the white to kind of bring in a highlight in the middle, and then I used some Prussian blue and sap green to bring in some shadows right on the shoreline, just so it didn't look just pure bright white and blue for the entire part of the water. I wanted to have those shadows right on the edge. This one's kind of a hill, so you don't see the actual shoreline, but the rest of them, wherever they touch, I brought in some sap green and Prussian blue. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking a tiny brush some titanium white and then just a touch of the um, Prussian blue so it's not super bright white and then I'm just going right along my shoreline and adding in this water line here. If I don't do that it's kind of hard to see exactly what's water and exactly what's ground so I'm just giving it that little indication that there's water right up against the shore. Now I'm just using a little bit of titanium white with glazing liquid to kind of give the water a sheen. That way it looks like it has this um, highlight on top of it too, and it kind of has like a surface to it. Otherwise it just kind of looks transparent. Because I don't have video of me painting this, I thought I would do it in my sketchbook to show you the technique I used. So I've put down some darker green to kind of simulate the green that I had on the canvas before I started doing the texture, and I'm going to be using a bristle brush. And I just kind of take um, some of my darker greens that I had for the faraway mountains. And once I have a nice dark green made up, something that's lighter than I have there already, I'm just going to kind of tap in the edge of the hill. And once I kind of have a nice little edge of it here, where it kind of goes up and along, I can maybe start to add in another one and just kind of work my way to the other side and just kind of make it up as I go along. It's kind of fun to just tap in the shapes for these hills. And once I have a good shape for my hills, I can take lighter and lighter greens and just kind of come in here and tap. I have a little bit too much paint on my brush because this is smaller, but um, you can just add in these highlights. And if you want it to be lighter, you can just keep going, adding more yellow and more white, more and more highlights on the brighter parts until you're happy with the look of it. As you get into the foreground, you can switch to an even bigger bristle brush, and this is where I think I have the most fun, which is why I continued to fill in the ground before I did any of the water. I was just having so much fun. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mix up kind of a medium green and just tap in, filling in these nice hill shapes. This one went down, maybe I want it to come down again, but then up. And because of this nice edge I'm trying to do where I'm kind of holding it like this, I get all of these nice little pieces down here. And I can do the same thing, adding in another hill this way. Maybe I wanted to tap one in back here. And just like those far away ones, I'm gonna mix up lighter and lighter yellow greens to add in highlights just along the very edges. And that way I get all of these nice textures. Now, if you don't like how dark this gets here, just use a lighter base color, or when you do your very first layer of the texture, bring it down to cover more of that darkness and it'll kind of be a bit more even like mine are. The other trick I have is if you want it to be more yellow, you can add yellow into it. And if you want it to be more brown, then you can just add a little bit of red because it's the complement of green. And you can play with this and use it for many, many, many different things just because you can vary up the color so much and give it a different look. If you use more browns, it's going to look more fall color. But if you use more yellows and more greens, it's going to look more spring-like, like it's a brand new year. 
I use chalk to draw in where I want my tree trunks to go. Now I'm going to be painting over that so you're never going to see it, but I wanted an idea of how tall each tree should be and kind of the direction it's growing. So I'm going to mix up a dark green and use this bristle brush and just kind of start to tap in the shape of the tree and some of the bushes that are going to go along the ground. A lot of these tree trunks are going to get covered by all of the different highlights I'm going to put in for these trees, but I do want to show them a little bit, so I'm putting them in solid so you can see them. I started with some Mars Black to kind of block in the basic tree shape and to do the shadow part of the tree trunk, and then I'm taking some Van Dyke Brown and some Titanium White on my palette, not mixing it up super well as you can see here on my palette knife, and I'm just uh, starting on the left side because that's where my highlight is, and just bringing it up across all of these tree trunks. I'm keeping all my highlights kind of on the left because that's where I put them for the clouds and the mountains. And I'm going to do the same thing with these trees. I'm going to continue to use my bristle brush and just work into some of my lighter greens, yellow greens, and kind of tap them on the left side to make sure that they have that same highlight. I added some small sticks by doing the same way I did the trunk, putting down some black, some uh, Van Dyke Brown and Titanium White just to kind of give it a little bit of life so it just wasn't all green. Now that that's all done and both trees on both sides are done, I'm going to do the path first just so the house has something to sit on when I put it there. I'm going to lay down black first and then I'm going to use that Van Dyke Brown and Titanium White just like I did these tree trunks to kind of make it look like dirt or stone here. This is the final drawing and placement of the player house I'm going to put here on the canvas. I started by roughing it in with chalk, um, trying to figure out exactly how big I wanted it, exactly where it was going to sit in the scenery, and I kind of just sketched it in roughly until I was happy with that part of it at least. And I had been drawing it in my one point perspective like this one here, just because that's how I had sketched it out. But once I had it here on the canvas, it had this really weird visual flow to it. Everything led up the path and then right because that was the way the vanishing point went. All of my perspective lines went this way and it felt really strange. I felt like they should continue along the path. So I moved my vanishing point out here. And then once I had kind of the face of the house drawn in, the part that's nice and square, I drew all of those lines to my vanishing point, and then I could kind of figure out how deep the house was going back in space, and I could draw these faraway lines. I also changed the woodshed. Um, it looks pretty flat in game, like this line would be just straight, but I don't think anyone would build a roof that way. Um, the water needs somewhere to go, so it needs to be at an angle. So I just kind of made this into like a real lean-to by making those lines angled. It's kind of strange to think about 
taking something that's almost a top-down view, changing it into this one-point perspective where you see different parts of the house that you don't see in-game. There's lots to think about, like exactly how I'm going to treat this stone wall that goes around the side of the house here. There's different things to consider. So um, that's why I made some of those changes that I did, but now that it's drawn here, I'm going to block in the basic colors with a paintbrush, um, like the red roof, kind of the tan wood, just to make sure I kind of cement down the placement and all of these chalk lines. house is blocked in um, colors that it's going to look like in the end. They're not perfect and they're not exactly what I want yet, but I wanted to get it here on the canvas so I could erase all of the extra chalk that was around it. Um, now that that's done, I can add detail and texture and color. I'm going to take this from like a C project up into like an A project by adding all those things. It's so flat right now, I mean there's a little value to it, but otherwise it's still pretty flat. Um, I'm going to work on the things that are further back first, so like this window needs to be done before I do the wood that sits on top of it to make the panes. Just working that way through all of the different pieces piece by piece. Um, doing things like adding the detail of the siding so I have all of these nice straight wood lines. Doing things like adding texture so it actually looks like wood. And then of course value. Um, thinking about how all of my highlights are kind of on the left side of the trees and the left side of the mountain and keeping the same sort of theme here for the house where this side of the house is going to be lighter than the face of the house. house is almost done. I just have the shutters to fill in and they're going to be filled in green so it's not really a big change but right now it looks like it's floating. There's no shadow that kind of cements it down to the ground. As I fill in the path here and finish this part I'm going to fill in some of the grass here to kind of cover up this part but while I'm doing that I can kind of fix that floating issue where I put in some of the darker greens here to make the house sit on the ground. As I'm covering up parts of the grass here to kind of just make it blend in better, I also kind of want to hide parts of the house behind some bushes. So it looks like it's tucked in there. So I've just put a little bit of green kind of in front of this fence part. And I'm going to do kind of the same over here, just to kind of make it look like it's part of the landscape. I had tried to put some bushes in here to kind of push the house back and make it part of the actual landscape. I had used the same colors as the ground and I thought it looked a bit strange. So I've just put down some more sap green and Prussian blue and I'm going to go back over those once that's dry so it matches these bushes here and doesn't look like grass. And we're done! We have a scene from Stardew Valley. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster, or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.